Hey everybody, Kelly Engineering here, and welcome to episode 23 of Project Ozone 3. Uh, in between episodes, I really didn't do anything. I uh, got done with all the Lordcraft stuff, and I, uh, yeah, we're just going right into episode 23. So before episode 22, I did set this up in the Void Dimension, and uh, yeah, it's just a bunch of 3x3 three three plots where I'm going to be placing all of my, uh, all my mystical agriculture seeds. It is daytime, which means these can grow. So I finished 10 10 tending my dye seeds and planted them up here. Uh, the void dimension actually follows the same exact uh, day night cycle as the overworld does. So if you uh, don't have an adequate light level, then it's just that then your plants aren't going to grow and you're going to have to work around that. But what I want to do this episode is I want to create plant gatherers for each plot. I don't need to because there are range upgrades. See this range upgrade right here? The plant gatherer by default only goes one in front of it. But with the help of range upgrades, which I have, here we are. If you put in the tier zero range upgrade, it'll upgrade it to a three by three area. The tier one, whoops, the tier one upgrade We'll move it to a uh, 5x5, and then the tier 3 upgrade is uh, far too big. Yeah, the tier 3 upgrade is a 9x9 area, so the, tier, the range upgrades are not that difficult to craft. Whatever it is is just going to be some plastic, and then a different material depending on the, uh, depending on the tier that it is. So tier 5 is going to require some bronze, but tier 4 requires copper, all the way up to tier 11 which is emeralds. I'm going to focus on uh, just making tier zeros because all it requires is cobblestone and I, uh, I've been constantly generating plastic. But yeah, I'm going to stick with the tier zeros because the tier zero will upgrade my uh, area to the 3x3 three three that I want. The first thing that we're going to be getting into this episode is thermal solars. So I've been collecting titanium dust for quite a while. I have over 8,000 of it. So it makes an Honestly, the thermal solar panels are actually the easier ones to make. Because if you look at, uh, so thermal solars, thermal tier one thermal solar panel, which is just a bunch of titanium stuff, iron nuggets, versus the solar flux reborn, which requires these mirrors. And uh, yeah, that's gla uh, full glass and iron just to make three mirrors. And then these mirrors are used to make the cells, and it's an absolute grind fest making the Solar Flux Reborn. So to start with, I'm going to make the Tier 1 solar panels from Thermal Solar. Because I can very easily get them up to like Tier 4, using all of my titanium. And yeah, it's going to be no issue whatsoever. So, let's get into that. Alright, so let's get started. To make the Tier 1 solar panel, I'm going to need titanium panels and solar panel bases. I'm going to make the solar panel bases first, and I'm going to make uh, five stacks of 64 for these. Boom. So five stacks of 64 for the solar panel base. And then it gets a little trickier when you're making the titanium panels. So one stack of uh, titanium panels is going to require <laughs> nine stacks of titanium glass plates. Uh, nine stacks of titanium glass plates. Oh, I need to make more glass panes. Boom. So nine stacks of these is just a titanium dust and a glass pane. Nine. Awesome. I'm going to combine those together. There we go. Oh, missing three. Excellent. So I'm just going to do this two more times. So I've made my third stack of titanium panels, and in order to make three full stacks of these titanium panels, you require 1,728 uh, glass panes and uh, titanium dust. Just to throw it out there, and I'm going to throw that number up on the screen as well. 1,728. The last thing that we're going to need to create are titanium solar cells, which are more titanium glass plates, not nearly as many. And then the solar crafting components. The solar crafting components, really easy. I'm going to make 64 of those. And then I'm going to prep up the titanium glass plates again because my ME system has no more titanium dust in it. 
There we go. <clears throat> 512 titanium dust, 512 glass panes. There we go. Now all I have to do is combine that and these. Well, let's throw those in. <laughs> and we are ready for our tier ones. There we go. I have tier one solar panels. I got some more glass smelting up, so in the meantime, I'm going to uh, go into a brief segue here regarding my endest furnaces, which it's, I need to get up to zenith furnaces real quick. So I have the ore processing upgrade and the processing upgrade in here that a uh, that a user commented on in my video, and I didn't write down that user, but I'll put it up on the screen. Uh, thank you very much for this idea. But uh, to use the ore processing upgrade and the processing upgrade to quadruple my output inside the Endest Furnace. But uh, I wasn't sure whether or not pulverized gold... The heck? Oh, I have my, uh, I have it set up wrong. So I wasn't sure whether or not pulverized gold... No, that's just two ingots. And then if I put in a gold ore... Awesome, it does quadruple it. So I'm going to stop crushing all of my stuff, and I'm just going to throw all of my ore in here and quadruple the gold that I get. So thank you very much for uh, for that idea. When you first suggested it, I went to my Endus furnace. I'm like, well, wait, why would I put the ore processing upgrade in there? I would need to sacrifice my speed upgrade before realizing once these are zenith furnaces, the speed upgrade isn't going to matter at all anyway. So yeah, putting in the ore processing and the... Uh, regular processing upgrade to quadruple everything was a fantastic idea and uh, yeah thank you very much for it I've just my, made my last batch of titanium panels to make the tier 2 solar panels and uh, the only difference is instead of having to craft up that component from earlier just put in the solar panel I made before and voila tier 2 solar panels now I am going to use up all of my titanium dust, making uh, the highest tier possible that I can for the solar panels. I think I have enough to get to tier 4. And uh, after that, I'm going to uh, head back to the void dimension and start setting up all of my uh, start setting up all of my seeds. I have made tier 4 solar panels, and I've attached one to uh, this plant gatherer over here and this plant gatherer over there. I have them on pause right now because I don't want them to be constantly running. In between episodes, I did hook up this ender chest right here, and this is a specifically for Inferium Essence ender chest. And uh, any Inferium Essence that the plant gatherer gets, it'll immediately push it into here, and then in the overworld, that ender chest will pull them out and insert them into the ME system when this is all done. Now the next step that I need to do in order to complete this is I need to take care of the sludge. So I made this ender tank right here, and I'm actually going to make a lot more ender tanks. Uh, because I need to attach one ender tank to each plant gatherer that I create. I don't have the blaze rods for that, so I've been to the nether. And uh, in the nether, I have this uh, blaze spotter. Whoops. So I'm going to make a little uh, killing chamber for blazes, so I can collect up some blaze rods. And uh, yeah, once I have enough blaze rods, I'll be back with you. This isn't the uh, most beautiful setup, but it's a setup that works. So I have the mob crusher here, and uh, a restirbed spawner, which was just that blaze spawner I uh, had, and then I, really? And then I just touched it with a drop of evil, which I got from the mob farm. I put in some speed upgrades, and yeah, I have, a, I have blazes coming in at a good tick here. So I've got blaze rods coming in, uh, any loot bags that this thing picks up will just immediately get trashed, and then I have a quantum tank taking in all of the essence. Oh, I did not, hmm, yeah, whatever. Oh yeah, and I have the range add-on here, making sure that it's big enough to actually get the whole area. But, now we just gotta play the waiting game and uh, wait till I get a good, a good amount of blaze rods, probably two stacks. I also edited the mob farm a little bit and put my mob slaughter factory right here with another range add-on. So anytime a mob falls in here, it will immediately get slaughtered. Uh, whenever the mob slaughter factory um, 
kill something, it doesn't actually take any of the uh, any of the loot, but it will create the liquid meat and the. Uh... Why is there still liquid meat in there? Ah, oh, there isn't. And the pink slime. So having that push out into two fluid tanks and then quantum tanks right here. The reason why I'm uh, separating it is because if I need to use the pink slime or the meat for anything, I can just take this and it'll still fill up and won't back up. It won't back up the slaughter factory. Now the Abyssal Craft uh, demon animals apparently are immune to the... Uh, they're apparently immune to the fact that mob drops should not be spawning whenever the mob slaughter factory kills something. So a bunch of uh, mutton and beef and chicken has been falling in here. And so what I have is just one absorption hopper picking that stuff up and pushing it into a trash can. Because I have no need for that stuff. And then I've turned off some of the lights up here. Actually, I'm going to turn off all the lights and see what happens. Now I may have to uh, cover it up again if I want it to, if I want it to work well. It's all right. This will do for now. Oh yeah, see these chickens. So the second the chicken enters the mob slaughter factory range, it gets turned into a demon chicken. Then the second the demon chicken is killed, you see I just got this uh, loot bag. That shouldn't happen for normal mobs uh, using the mob slaughter factory, but. Yeah, the Abyssal Craft mobs are an exception, so make sure if you set up, if you do something like that, you have proper contingencies in place to not lag out your world. The next problem that I've run into is uh, trying to get the fluid conduits to actually connect to the plant gatherer. And uh, so I just connected this pressurized fluid conduit, and even with the Yeda wrench, it won't force the conduit to attach to the block. So I had a, uh, I had a little look at it. And industrial foregoing has something called a fluid transfer. I don't know if this is a. Uh, I don't know if this block actually will allow the machine to take the fluid, or whether or not that's something that's allowed by default. Regardless, oh no. Well, that's unfortunate. <laughs> Forgot when I'm working in the void and need to turn on my coin. In any case, I'm going to try to craft this transfer, this fluid transfer add-on, and there's a pull and a push variety. So actually, I should try to be making the uh, the push variety, which requires light blue dye. Well, I don't have light blue dye, but since we're sticking to uh, industrial foregoing, I made this dye mixer. But in order to use the dye mixer, I need to supply it with red, green, and uh, and blue dye, and then make a lens in order to get the color that I want. So that's my uh, that's my next step. I've had the mod sla the mob slaughter factory going for a while and I have four buckets of pink slime. Pink slime is actually required in order to make the lens that I need so let's check this out lens. Um, there you are light blue laser lens. So this is the lens I need to put in the dye mixer in order to get my light blue dye. But that requires pink slime. The only way to get pink slime that I know of is by actually taking this pink slime bucket and just laying it down. Um, eventually from this source block of pink slime, a pink slime mob will spawn. So it's just a matter of playing the waiting game and sometimes it takes a while, sometimes it's almost immediate. So I've just laid down three of those buckets and I'm, gonna, uh, I'm just going to play the waiting game. Hopefully one of the uh, slimes spawns soon. There's one. All right. So it's a small little guy, and you'll notice that uh, the slime is actually starting to despawn now that the pink slime has spawned. So kill him, and it gave me pink slime. So one time I got four pink slime out of this, another time I got three. It seems to uh, seems to vary a little bit, but I'm going to keep going until I have enough uh, pink slime in order to craft up. Oh. Oh, that's just a spirit. Uh, any mob that touches the pink slime will immediately get the glowing effect, including me. So, yeah, it's just a cool little feature of the pink slime. After all that, I've got 16 pink slime. I'm going to throw those in there and make my light blue lens. Light blue lens. Awesome. So now with this light blue laser lens, I'm going to head back to the void. 
and insert this light blue laser lens in. So once I have supplied the sufficient amount of dye to it, uh, mainly the, hopefully it's just blue. Yep, all I have to do is just supply it with blue dye. And it is creating me, oh that's beautiful, a bunch of light blue artificial dye. So now I'm going to try to make this fluid at transfer add-on push. Got that, and add it into the machine. Well, that seemed to have worked. Let's uh, try to use the pressurized fluid conduit. Nope, still no connection. Hmm. Even with the Yeta? Nope, no connection. So it seems like it's just a uh, it's a set amount of pushing or pulling regardless. I wonder why it's just the plant gatherer that doesn't have the issue though. Oh, it's because it was paused. Well, okay. <laughs> that is good to know and something I did not know. Whenever the machine is paused, those connections don't exist. Huh. Interesting. Well, I made that fluid transfer uh, fluid transfer for nothing, but it was a fun experiment, and I have the dye mixer in case I ever need any sort of dye. Oh wow, that's a lot. In case I need any sort of dye later on down the road. Next step is taking care of all the sludge that our plant gatherers are going to be generating. So I have my ender tank, and sludge ender tanks are going to be purple, black, purple, and I'm going to have that push into my quantum tank. The quantum tank is going to feed into the sludge refiner and the sludge refiner is just whatever it generates it's going to push out to here. Uh, I happen to have all of the materials that the sludge generator generates anyway with the exception of Podzol. So I'll just wait for Podzol to come in here. Um, these resources are just going to act as a uh, as an emergency supply and once I have all of the essences going anyway, I'm not going to have to worry about this. I'm not going to ever hook this into the ME system. That's why there's void upgrades on it. And yeah, it's just a needlessly complicated machine. Now since the Inferium, since the Inferium farm is going right now, I also made this uh, just as a standby until I get the full setup up and running. But any Inferium essence that goes into here is just immediately pushed via conduits in the back into this compacting drawer just so I have blocks of inferior essence. Yeah, that's uh so that part is taken care of. Now it's just a matter of getting the seeds hook uh getting all the seeds made and planting them. So I'm over here working on uh getting my standard resource seeds and uh I made this imaginary time block a little bit uh before the episode started and I've been using it to help get my seeds up. So see how quick that those just grew? It's because the imaginary time block helps the uh, crop growth ticks and I'm not sure if it does but it seems like it does help out with the mutation speed as well so I have so the imaginary time block is definitely helping out when it comes to getting my seeds 10 10 10 it's cutting the time quite a bit in half so yeah that's uh that's what I'm doing the imaginary time block in order to craft it what I had to do was uh, I had to make the qubit tier 3 in order to do it, yeah, the Qubit Tier 3 used two of my nether stars, but other than that, all the resources are pretty standard to make. So yeah, imaginary time block. It's uh, helping me with my mutations. One more thing, because I have a feeling somebody is uh, going to mention it. So I made these clippers, which I can just take any crop, anything that's in a crop stick, and right click it, and it'll give me a little seed bag, which is awesome. I'll throw that away. And what I'm doing with this seed bag is I'm throwing it in the seed analyzer and it's turning it immediately into seeds. The reason why I'm doing that is because with the with these uh, crop clippings, there's a chance that... Uh, oh, whoops, that is totally my bad. With these crop clippings, there's a chance that it will fail. I just, of course, nothing's failing for me right now. <laughs> Uh, well, there's a chance that it'll fail, but with the seeds, there's no chance that it'll fail. Which is why I uh, throw them in the seed analyzer to begin with. That's why they immediately become seeds, and it saves me a little bit of time rather than just clipping and waiting for something to go. Or at least it, I feel like it does. So at this point, it's just preference. 
and I'm going to continue doing it. I'm in the hunting dimension right now, just slaughtering every mob that isn't a zombie or an ancient golem, trying to get mob chunks. So I can actually make all of the mystical agriculture... There we are. All the mystical agriculture seeds associated with mobs. And I'm one-shotting most of this stuff because, well, there's a reason I made my weapon a katana, and I don't think I explained this in the episode I made it, but katanas offer combos. So this is actually a pretty weak sword, all things considered. But the more that I attack with it, and you'll notice in the upper left-hand corner, I have, a, uh, I have a little combo marker. So I'm actually doing more damage the more that I use this katana, and it is absolutely fantastic. So it makes it really easy to go in and... Oh, wow, look at all the chunks I have. It makes it really easy to go in and... Uh, get all of your necessary mob chunks because anything made out of solium will have the chunky modifier, which means more mob uh, mob chunks have a chance to drop. So yeah, katana with uh, made out of solium is really good for uh, for getting mass amounts of mob chunks. I'm just about ready to uh, start transferring everything over to the storage drawers, but I'm a little uh, I'm a little torn right now. So I made these framed drawers, and they use the fiery nether bricks, but then the border is like a standard Minecraft nether brick. And then over here I did the same thing, but left the standard brick out. And uh, I actually really like both. I'm not sure which one I want to use. I mean, this pops a little bit more. But yeah, how well this blends still, uh... Yeah, it looks equally good to me, so I don't know which one to use. But... So, honestly, I'll just leave it up to you guys. The uh, I won't move anything into these drawers yet until I get the word after I post this episode. But yeah, which one do you like? The uh, one without the Minecraft nether brick on the borders or the one with it? In order to facilitate putting those drawers into the wall, I actually had to extend the outer wall out a bit. So the bottom half of this wall on the main, uh, on the main factory bit is actually jutting out. And then, yeah, I kept the indent where it was. In order to do that, I had to uh, put these basalt bricks just to uh, have a little border. Yeah, it, uh, I like how it looks. I definitely like how it looks, and I may make some fiery nether slabs and put that under here. This is, it looks a little janky right now. But that's what I had to do in order to put the drawers in here. And uh, honestly, I'm digging it. So this is what the platform looks like right now. And uh, you see the blank spaces. Of course, I, ha I have no idea what seeds I want to fill in here. But uh, this is passive mob. So uh, cows, pigs, sheep, chicken, and rabbit. And those are the only ones I'm missing for there. Uh, each platform that I make actually mirrors the uh, storage drawers embedded into the wall in the main base. So it is going to be 9 by 6 And down here, I have my ender chests set up. Each uh, plant gatherer has a different ender chest set up to it. So this is green, white, red, green, white, orange, and green, white, yellow. Uh, if I, if the ender chest is dealing with crops, it's going to be green, white, something. Or the first one is always going to be green. My inferium is green, white, green right here. So but yeah, that's how, uh, that's how the setup is going to work. Below the base is where I'm going to put the other ender chests. And then they're going to be outputting to a storage controller. Alright, so I have the uh, I have my plant gatherers running right now. Which is fantastic. Unfortunately, if we uh, go back to the void, you'll see that the uh, extraction is a little, it's a little slow. Actually, uh, I really like how... Uh, I like the clip that this is going. That's a really nice speed. Oh, so I don't think I mentioned this before, but I put tier 4 add-ons inside the uh, plant gatherer, so it handles a 3x3 three three area, each one. And yeah, it saved on resources, and it saves on time. But I am going to, just like I did over here with the Inferium, I'm going to add some uh, extract speed upgrades, uh, which are no problem to make, the hardest part of it. The hardest part of it is the piston. 
But yeah, I have plenty of electrical steel and of course iron. But yeah, the hardest part's the piston. And I'm just going to put the maximum amount in here, which is 15. And when 15 extract speed upgrades are inside a uh, conduit, then they'll extract a uh, they'll extract a stack at a time. The last thing that we're going to be doing this episode is creating growth crystals. So I tried this in a previous episode, but unfortunately the thing that was holding us back... Come on. The thing that was holding us back were these shards of water from Lordcraft. So those were damp crystals, which of course required simple crystals. Now that I have plenty of them, I've made the requisite damp crystals. And move these in here. And uh, what we're going to do is make those damp crystals. Come on. I'm sorry, what? Oh. <sighs> Silly me. You'd think, considering I just did an episode on it, that uh, I'd remember I need to be using this. Ah, so I have my shards of water. I'm going to need to make more, obviously, in order to make a stack of 64 growth crystals. But I'm going to get right on that, and other than that, I have more than enough materials, the iron and the bones, and the sea lanterns for that matter, to make growth crystals. In order to make the tier 2 growth crystals, I need fertility essence. So I have everything I need for that except for slime pearls, which I'm getting from loot bags right now. So I'm going to try a different route using random things. So let us type in slime, 1, 2, 3, 4... And that nether pearl I just mistakenly put in there. Boom. This is a slime cube. And slime cube is... Uh, slime cube's awesome, actually. So essentially what the slime cube does is, regardless of whether or not the chunk you're in is a slime chunk, it will make it a slime chunk. And uh, unlike normal slime chunks, slimes will spawn at any level. Any level, uh, let's turn that off and turn this off. Slimes will spawn at any level and they can at increased rates as well. So I would probably be better off putting this in the overworld where not a lot of mobs are spawning in the first place. But the slimes that spawn because of this, I'm just going to kill them and hopefully get the last slime pearls I need. Yeah, I was right on the money. I put it in the, uh, put it in the overworld on the Embers platform and uh, it doesn't... It doesn't hurt that a blood moon just started. So, whoop! I'm <laughs> just gonna continue killing slimes here. Alright, I have enough slime pearls. It didn't take very long after I placed down that slime cube. But, I'm gonna make... Six stacks. I'm gonna make six stacks because I need to make these lily pads of fertility. So I'm gonna need to make two stacks of lily pads, which is just nature essence, that's no issue. Otherwise, if it would be vines if I had gotten into Batania. And <laughs> I'm not even close to uh, fight or grow because I need rich slag. And actually, Nick, I have an idea for a machine that can get me a lot of rich slag quickly. But I'll get into that in another episode. For now, I'm going to go make some lily pads. Finally, tier 2 growth crystals. The heck just happened? Oh. <laughs> All right. Tier 2 Growth Crystals. You have got to be kidding me. Alright, round 3. Tier 2 Growth Crystals. Huzzah! So, the Tier 2 Growth Crystals are going to be amazing for me. Because they can be used as a water source and I can get rid of this ugliness. Actually, can Growth Crystals be painted? I doubt it, but it would be awesome if they could. No. You can paint slabs to look like the growth crystal for some odd reason. That's silly. Ah, well, well, I am happy with having these because they act as a uh, they act as a water source, and I believe they act as lighting as well. I could be wrong about that. Hold on, let's check that. They do not act as lighting. Regardless, they're a water source, and I have lighting right here in these chiseled rocks. So, I'm not worried about that. I'm just going to place all of these down. And, for the most part, I will have these three rows automated 
completely. So all I need to do now is hook these chests into this drawer controller and then it will uh, they'll start populating whatever drawers get decided on the standard just fire another brick or the fire another brick with the border but I think I'm gonna call that an episode uh, we accomplished quite a bit and it feels like it took forever <laughs> to get it all done but we got it done and I'm happy uh, next episode uh, I'm going to hook this in get everything done and then I'm going to get started working on Astral Sorcery. Uh, over here on this slime island, the one that's directly below me, or directly behind me, uh, this slime island has an Astral Sorcery temple thing in it. So I'm going to start Astral Sorcery there, uh, grab all of the goodies, and yeah, Astral Sorcery Beginnings. That'll be next episode. But with that, I'm Kelly Engineering, and I hope you did enjoy the episode, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.